What's up guys, Heart Pirates CCG here. I'm bringing you a Raise You deck without the Power Rangers involved. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, German Kingdom is what was basically meant for Raise You, is you know, you play the you know the the power rangers that you know level up into the the, the mega morphs or whatever they call them and uh you know you dawn minus one and then play basically like a bigger body from your trash um i've just found that i think it's very underwhelming um i feel like the german kingdom is like i think it's like three cards away from actually being like relatively good um you know you know a lot of decks are like oh it's just one card away from like being like a contender um rage is definitely like a deck that like probably needs like three cards to actually like compete in a, in a meta depending on how the meta even evolves um because none of the none of the cards really do a whole lot one's like a four six blocker one like has rush but you know it's like you know not that great uh and then the other one is like just a draw too so um there's nothing that really like impacts the game state really that much and uh even the turn where you do play judge it just feels like i don't know like it just doesn't do anything so um yeah without further ado let me talk about my deck and then like why i play the things i play and then uh what this deck struggles against from you know playing you know probably like probably 20 games with this deck so far so we're playing 12 2ks we're playing four sasaki we're playing four gion which those of you guys who don't know is just you know um basically like nami hate you know this deck doesn't play any searchers so we're playing like the most generically good 2ks that we can play um which in my opinion is gion sasaki for dead hands and then pudding um or i'm sorry not pudding uh khalifa and uh yeah so khalifa obviously is a plus three uh it's a draw two discard one and then um raise you gets you a draw whenever you dawn minus so you can basically just draw three cards of this card it's really good uh, and then we have like a pudding uh pudding is really powerful because pudding literally this deck will rip cards from your hand left and right you know between the pudding we're playing pudding we're playing law and then obviously the gion uh you know puts a you know when your opponent activates an event on your turn um so something like ace or whitebeard or nami or whatever it is uh you put a you bottom deck card um from from their hand so um you know between these cards right here you just you you're always maintaining hand control and you know if you're able to just keep establishing bodies while also maintaining hand control um i feel like that could be powerful um of course this deck is probably tier 2.5 but um you know it, it, it's a fun deck if you guys want to try it out i i like it a lot then we're playing two law just to respect the yamato um a lot of times you can counter out of yamato but you know I prefer to just chump block a 9k rather than discarding three cards, even if you can get it back. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find our Reju's though. Like, um, even though we do play technically six copies of Reju with the, the baby Reju, it's hard to sometimes see him. Um, that's why we have other forms of, you know, Dawn Minus so we can actually draw it. Uh, and then we're playing four kid. Once you get the kid out, it makes it a lot better to start Dawn Minusing because you're actually not Dawn Minusing. You're just getting a free draw one. Um, and then obviously get the the, the dawn uh, back and he's also a 6k blocker uh, like i said we're already playing the rejus we're playing two of the baby ones and then four of the regular ones we're playing three king um and then we're playing the reason that we're playing king is because we one we want to go second with this deck and then two um there's a lot of four costs in this in, in this meta coming up and we have like uh we have um what is it we have the the samurai from thriller bark i can't even remember his name ryuma um, so he's a four cost and then you have like, uh, o o Okiku, the yellow one, then you have, uh, Kuzan, then you have Absalom and you have Hog, Hogback and all of these cards are all four costs. So this is just a good answer on curve for him. Uh, then we have four law or I'm sorry, three law to rip cards from their hand. It's also a draw one when we do it. Then we have three kid. It's just a draw one, um, give your leader plus 1000. And then obviously if the body sticks then you know, you're in business, this body doesn't really stick a whole lot. Um, honestly, there's not a lot of good boss monsters in this deck. Um, I, I because you dawn minus a lot, you can't really go the route of like, sanji into like mihawk or sanji into rush kaido um because you know you're not really going to get to nine dawn very easily um so it's just it's just tough um to play anything above the cost of seven because you're just it's a lot of times you're not gonna be able to get it then we're playing three brick fists a lot of times too is what we can do is like um you know we can like brick fist something back to someone's hand and then we can like they can be at like seven or eight to even more cards and we can rip them out with like law or pudding or something like that or obviously if we trigger it we can like bounce our own pudding back to our hand um and be able to like play it again the next turn and like rip cards out of their hand um it's also just a cheap it's cheap removal um you know and a lot of the cards don't really have a lot of on play effects right now like um you have like a borsalino you can you can bounce back you can uh bounce back like um 
you know, all of the yellow cards, Cracker, Paro Sparrow, um, Okiku. Um, I don't think Okiku has an on-play effect. I don't think. If I, it's it's super, dude, it's like four in the morning. I can't even think right now. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's really powerful. Um, you know, obviously this could be a flex spot depending on what you want. And then obviously we have the Red Rock. Uh, this deck doesn't play anything above the cost of seven. So removing sometimes those higher cost characters is really tough. Uh, so that's what the Red Rock's for. Then we have three Gatlings because this hand, this deck can draw a lot of dead cards and you need to be able to keep a low hand size for the Raise You play uh, to keep refilling. And then we're playing four Top Knot, um, which helps you get to the Raise You size, uh, you know, the the, dawn, the less Dawn than your opponent. And then also just bottom decks like stuff like Kuzan or um, Luchi or whatever it is. That way they can't recycle it back with like the, the Gecko Maria. So um, the, the idea of this deck basically is just to like, rip cards from your opponent's hand while drawing cards and then overwhelming them with like 5k attacks you know like 5k with pudding and then 5k with your leader and then 5k with reju and then you know obviously pop their cards or, or bounce them back to hand and kind of like reset their like reset their 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 whole turn right as you you put them back in their hand and then you you know shuffle them back into the deck with with pudding or you know rip them out with wall and that, that's kind of the whole, the whole point of the deck um it, it, it struggles definitely into into sakazuki because it's just so much removal while also being able to like just play so many cards that you know it's hard for you to get, it's hard for you to like be able to spend the dawn to be able to get rid of them because not only are they like popping your king and your kids and all of that but like you know like they put cards like they put a hound blaze back in the deck and then if you shuffle it into their deck and they draw the hound blaze it's like they have like five copies of hound blaze so it's just tough man it it's it's definitely a tough matchup so um Bear that in mind if you're if you're playing this deck, but um, I'll go ahead and show you the matches now. All right, so Sakazuki, pretty good one to start off with. Um, Mulligan into not the greatest of hands, but um, it could be a lot worse. I mean, this guy does gain a lot of value from his characters, so um, I want to basically force him into getting a ton of cards in hand, and then we'll. Um, We'll rip him with law the next turn. Um, I think I think that's the best bet. Uh, obviously, we want to go second and steal their going second from them, but um, we lost the dice roll, obviously, or whatever the coin flip thing is in this deck. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and just start it off with the law, and then we're gonna go ahead. We have three red rocks in hand, which is not what we want to see, right? Um, but that, I mean, that's that's what we're doing right now. We're just getting rid of cards in their hand over and over again uh, until we just win from advantage. Um, and I, I, that's kind of the point of this deck. Um, obviously, um, you know, decks that can just kind of outlast that can be pretty good. Um, we're going to go ahead and just ditch this Gion right here. Uh, we need a Gatling because we can't we can't use all these Red Rocks at once. Like, it's just going to be really tough to do. Okay, so Houndblaze, we're definitely going to take this one. Uh, so it's going to go 11 at life. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just bounce it back to your hand. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use that for sure. So we're going to go ahead and swing seven here. And I was hoping to draw like a pudding or something like that, but we didn't do it. Um, and then we'll play a Khalifa here and then pass. And then depending on what he does, if he geckos here, we're going to just go ahead and, uh, bottom deck the gecko with the, with the red rock. Uh, the reason we bounce it back to hand is because um, obviously we were hoping to just, you know, get in law range or putting range and shuffle it back. But um, I wanted to hopefully do something else with my, okay, this is going to have blades again. And, th and this is where the deck shines, right? Is, you know, because you just Rebecca to Suru to do what? Like, I'll go ahead and take this. Not a big deal. Uh, is he just going to Luchi it? Yeah, and then I'll just bounce it back with Khalifa. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> the breakfast bouncing back the Khalifa. That's funny. <laughs> and then we could. Oh man, that's too. That's too. That's that's rich. That's real rich. Okay. Um. We have to start getting rid of these red rocks in our hand because this is just unbearable. Um. Gonna have to spin it back. Yeah. It's just, it's just, we're just like, it's, we're just like our red, like these red rocks aren't doing anything right now. Um, 
drawing all three of them hurts. Um, I had to use the top knot there because I wanted to get the Dawn Minus out because like the, the Dawn Minus is just really, really annoying. Um, I don't know why I swung seven right there. I should or I'm sorry, five. I should have swung seven. So I wasn't paying attention, guys. Uh, and then we'll just play this Khalifa and then we'll, we'll just pass. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and discard this Gion. And if he... Okay, Kuzans. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, I guess this is just where we swing seven and then Red Rock. Okay, so this build's playing the Kuzan. That's interesting. Okay. Finally, we can start getting some cards out of our hand. Jesus, this has been terrible. Okay. Um, so Tashiki searches brand new. Brand new searches Virgo. Okay, so nothing really too scary so far. Um, doesn't have enough to gecko now, so um, the best he can do is what three and then okay, so we'll take this one, no problem. Goes into a blocker law and then just plays a borso, that's totally fine. Okay, so I think the play here is to do we establish the kid? So, kid top knot, I think that's the best bet right there. It's just kid top knot and then play law, I think, right? Ooh, that's good too. But yeah, I think we're still going to just go uh, five into his life here. And then we're just going to play. We're going to play the kid here, kid's effect. And then we're going to play the law here and then pass. So um, decent, right? I mean, this is kind of how we we're supposed to win this game is just win by advantage. I mean, shuffling his, shuffling his hand back into his deck or discarding a bunch of cards. Uh, we haven't played pudding, actually. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, and then, and then this is, this is actually huge guys. So we're just going to go ahead and go ahead and, uh, bottom deck that right there, which is just massive. And then we're going to go ahead and do, uh, eight at life, activate effect, draw a card, pretty good stuff right there. If I do say so myself, and then we're going to go ahead and go, um, I think we're going to go nine at life here. And I don't think we're going to lose here because we have a 2K, a 2K, and two 1Ks, and a blocker, and a life, and our leader's at 6,000. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is kind of how the deck's supposed to play, right? I mean, we're, we're kind of in a good spot here. So, we're just going to go 9 here. If you took the 7, you kind of have to take the 9. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just pass. Um, I mean, a Houndblaze will do him, will do good, right? But I still think we get out of it because we do have one life left. We're at 5. Okay, that's fine. We're not no, no counter. All right, yeah. Um, in in previous versions of this deck, we were playing um, Borsalino, the seven cost, but we just found that, um, it just wasn't <laughs> okay. Well, there it is, right there. Uh, it just you know the 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 previous versions of this deck, we were playing the Borsalino. Um, I think I said that in my video or in my in my first part of the video, but um, I feel like this is just better because it's consistently like drawing cards and you know a six k leader is a six k leader, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's game one that we go ahead and go to go ahead and go to uh, game two. All right, so this is actually the first game we have opened up with a king the entire time I've been playing this deck. I keep playing against Sakazuki's, and obviously this deck is not good into Sakazuki. Um, and we are just like, that's not what I'm looking to see with this matchup, right? I'm not looking to see a Sakazuki. So I played like seven games. I've beaten like two of the Sakazuki's with this deck. It's, it's not good into Sakazuki guys. It's just straight up. Um, it is good. It is good into Gecko though. Cause Gecko has less removal than Sakazuki. Um, we are going to go ahead and trash this Reiju though. Oh my god, bro. Why the fuck did I do that? It's like four in the morning right now, guys. I'm trying to make this video come out today because I forgot that I needed to record one for today. I mean, I guess I didn't need to record one, but i uh, been wanting to make this video because I have some other stuff planned that I want to get out. Um, so I wanted to do this one first. But um, yeah, that, that was... This guy's probably like, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, yeah, that was not good of me. But I will say, I think this deck destroys Uta, though, because uh, putting, like, gets rid of all their advantage. Um, uh, do I do that, though? Do I do the pudding, or do I play Khalifa? Yeah, I think I just do the pudding here. I was going to go Khalifa, but I feel like the pudding's better, because I'm just going to go King next turn. Because uh, I was going to go Khalifa and then play the kid, but because he took that no trigger, I was just going to take the cards out of his hand either way. Um, and it's just a, it's just a, a call, basically a minus two, um, going from seven to uh, five, and then 
you know, obviously I could have used this when he has like eight or cards in hand, but I feel like obviously establishing the body is good. And then um, he's going to get it back either way. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't think I'm worried about him swinging into me now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do let's see five here. I would go to five. So I go to seven. I think I'm going to use it and establish the kid. I'm going to kid top knot. I think that's what I'm going to do here. I think that'd be a dope play. Instead of the king, I just go kid top knot and establish a body so that way I can king later on and, and draw cards without Dawn minusing. I think that's the best play. Interesting. Okay, so he swings five there. Okay. Um, we'll discard the Gion here. Now, what is he going to play for three? Is he going to play like Nami? Is he going to play Brook? Uta. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and play this kid here. And then we're going to go ahead and Dawn minus two, target the Uta, draw a card. Then we're going to swing five into the Jimbe. And then we're going to swing five more into the into his leader and now we're able to draw because he has i don't think he has an answer for a five cost and actually i guess he has a what is it uh what black light or whatever it's called um yeah now now we're just looking for like we're looking for a raise you to refill our hand if we raise you here we draw two we could you know use our leader effect to do something else what are we doing six of this pudding right here we could go live okay pudding's fine yeah take take away the pudding is nine cards in hand this is a good time to uh what is he gonna do here play nami yeah nami but he leaves one dawn open for what damn so this would be a good time to putting wow he whiffs off the nami that's interesting okay um and this is where king is just really powerful is because we dawn minus pop the nami and oh my god and we draw into the red rock that's so good um so we have eight so um i think we do attack with the uh we attack with kid here i think we attack with kid and then i think we swing five we bait we bait him like we're gonna swing seven seven but we actually we're gonna top knot the uh the brook i think did we top knot the brook does it matter if we top knot the brook because we could just save it for next turn probably already has a brook in hand though if we bounce the brook back he might actually be inclined to play it and then we can just top knot him again and that way we actually get the draw so i think we're gonna yeah i think we're just gonna swing five here we're gonna bounce back the brook because I guess we don't really care that much if he plays it again. Because we can just bottom deck it. Or we can top knot it. And we'll go to 10 Don so we can top knot and red rock if he plays like the Luffy combo. So I think I think that's what we're going to do. I think, I mean, hopefully we can like go like raise you into top knot. And that way we can draw like a ton of cards. We can swing six into that. We're going to go ahead and just 2k counter out. Uh, let's see what he does here. So he plays... Okay, so the next card in his life is Izo. Okay, he plays an I'm Invincible. And we're going to go ahead and block right here. Uh, does he play another I'm Invincible? No. Might have another one, right? I mean, he has eight cards in hand. The odds of him having another one are pretty likely. Unless he's just going to Brook Nami. If you Brook Nami, I feel like that's a death sentence now. One raise you and we're back in the game. Wow, he has another one. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. The kid, like, I'm at, I'm at 10 Don. The kid doesn't really matter at this point. Whatever. I mean, I guess we could have saved it, but I feel like the Red Rock's just better in case he plays, like, Doflamingo. The kid doesn't really matter that much. He just has two Don. Like, he's just going to play a Law. <laughs> no, he just drew another kid. That's funny. Um. Swing seven here. See what we do. See what happens. And then we're going to use this. We're not going to play the kid first. I wanted to see what we were going to get off the draw, but we didn't get a whole lot. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do eight at life here. 
force him to use two 2Ks. Unless he just doesn't want to use two 2Ks. Which is A-OK -okay with me. Um, I don't think he has anything to pop a 6, right? Alright, so he has all the card advantage in the world, surprisingly, even though our deck is supposed to be good against card advantage, but, um... We discarded the Raju thinking we were going to draw into another one because we have so many of them. I mean, that's a Death Sentence right there. We have 10 dot. We have an active kid. He should have just swung at... I mean, I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to dress my kid either way, but he should have just swung at the kid. Um, what if this is a bait, though? Nah, I mean, either way, there's nothing else I can do. I guess I could Red Rocket, but... Um, Either way, I mean, it doesn't really matter because like he can't kill me next turn either way And I can just bounce back like spin off blockers and stuff. So maybe that could have been a bait I don't know. So 16 at life. This has to be a 2, 4, so 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 6 so, Like pretty yes, he has a 6, a, 6 2Ks and this deck is notorious for not drawing a lot of 2Ks um, Yeah, he doesn't have it Yeah, GG bro. All right, so that's that's kind of the deck, right? Um it loses to Sakazuki most of the time, um, unless you draw really well. Um, it can beat Gecko. It can beat, obviously, like any other. Like it can beat a lot of decks. Uh, might have a hard time against Anel, depending on how well they trigger. Um, maybe against Katakuri too, but you know you're able to like get, deal with their their early bodies. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this deck, and then if you guys want to play it, um, you know, see how it plays. See ya.